New electric vehicles are making news each day. Some we've heard about recently, some have just been announced, and others are getting updated specs as the release gets closer. Today we're going to look into all the latest EVs coming across the board from affordable to expensive and everything in between. Let's get into it and a special thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring a portion of this video. As I always like to do, let's do a very quick overview of Tesla's current EV options. Like it or not, all of these cars are coming to market specifically competing with Tesla's massive head start in this area. Tesla's most important cars are the Model 3 and Y. The Model 3 starts at $40,240, gets a 272 mile EPA range, and a 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. Then the long range model is $47,240, gets a 333 mile EPA range, and 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. Up from there is the performance model. Model. Tesla's most popular car is the Model Y, a crossover SUV, and that car starts at $47,740 for a 279 mile EPA range in 0 to 60 in 5 seconds. Up from there is the long range at $50,490 with a 330 mile EPA range in 4.8 seconds 0 to 60. They also have a performance model on top of that. Those are the main cars brands are competing with, but Tesla also sells the Model S and X in more of the luxury category. The Model S now starts at $78,490 for a standard range model with 320 miles of range and 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. Long range is $10,000 more with a 405 mile range and 3.1 seconds 0 to 60, and Plaid is $108,490, taking that to the record holding 1.99 seconds 0 to 60. Lastly, the Model X standard range is $88,490 for a 269 mile EPA range and 4.4 seconds 0 to 60. Long range is $10,000 more with a 348 mile EPA range and 3.8 seconds 0 to 60. And then Plaid takes it from there at the same price as the Plaid Model S with a record holding 2.5 seconds 0 to 60. All of these cars are readily available and that is one of Tesla's biggest advantages. So it's exciting to see what other EVs are coming out. Tesla does have the Cybertruck coming out sometime soon, but pricing, final specs, and release dates still remain a mystery. One other thing to note is that charging is now changing. In the past, I'd note that Tesla has a massive advantage over every other EV due to their vast supercharging network, but most brands we'll talk about today have actually partnered with Tesla on this front. By 2025, they'll be using Tesla's connector and have access to 12,000 supercharging superchargers. This is great for all EVs because Tesla's supercharger network makes traveling very simple. First up today, Acura has finally unveiled their first EV, the Acura ZDX. This is the result of the precision concept they teased back in 2022, but it'll carry the nameplate of the ZDX that debuted in 2010. This one is going to be an SUV though. At Monterey Car Week, they revealed it'll have two powertrain configurations, as well as a performance type S trim. They'll all have Google apps built in, like Google Assistant and Google Maps, but more will be available from the Google Play Store. And of course, it'll also have over-the-air software updates. The ZDX the ZDX A spec version will have the option of a single or dual motor powertrain, and the Type S trim is just dual motor. All trims will ship with an 18 speaker Bong & Olufsen audio system and two digital displays. The A trim will get up to 325 miles of range, while the S trim will get up to 500 horsepower, sacrificing 37 miles of range there. Other S upgrades are air suspension and larger wheels. It'll start around $60,000, with the S trim being a $10,000 upgrade. As for charging, they claim that you you can regain up to 81 miles of range in 10 minutes, and it sounds like it'll be NACS compatible since their parent company Honda recently made that switch. Next up, GM has confirmed they'll be releasing an Ultium-based Chevy Bolt EV. The Bolt was a fan favorite until it was briefly discontinued, so many were happy to hear it'll still be revived on this new platform. That should lower costs for GM, streamlining its production, and hopefully that'll mean that this car could be pretty affordable. The last Bolt started at $26,500 with a 259 mile range, so those are specs that are hard to beat. GM is also planning to launch six other EVs later this year, including the Chevy Silverado EV, Chevy Blazer EV, Chevy Equinox EV, Silverado EV RST first edition, Bright Drop Zevo 400, and the Cadillac Celestique. On top of all of those, GM has teased electric coupes coming in the future. All we know there is that in a video that they released talking about their new vehicle to home charging capabilities, they mentioned this. At the end of the video, they say by 2026, vehicle to home technology will be available to new Ultium based SUVs, sedans, coupes, hatchbacks, and trucks. This could be referring to an all electric Corvette or a Camaro, but we'll have to wait and see. 
Next is the Fiat 600e, a crossover SUV with up to 248 miles of WLTP range. That's bumped up to 372 miles in the, quote, purely urban operation. Keep in mind that those ranges definitely don't translate to EPA, and they're very high compared to EPA. Starting under $40,000, it's set to compete with the Volvo EX30 that we'll get to in just a minute. The 600e is the successor to the Fiat 600, dating back to the 1950s. It'll have room for five passengers with, quote, ample storage space in the interior. Storage space is a common concern with a Fiat, but this car looks like it'll have plenty of room inside. With 156 horsepower, it'll have a perfectly reasonable 0 to 62 time of 9 seconds. It should also be able to fast charge from 10 to 80% in less than 30 minutes. Around the same size is the upcoming 2025 Volvo EX30. It's their smallest and most affordable EV yet, actually measuring shorter than the Chevy Bolt EV. It'll start at $34,950 and come in two trims. The single motor extended range will have a 275 mile range and the twin motor performance will get 265 miles. It's also rated to tow up to 2,000 pounds. The sound system will be a full width sound bar at the base of the windshield, which is a different approach than many automakers. That's one of the many changes in this car that will add simplicity to the manufacturing process to hopefully bring down its cost. The full specs for the Kia EV5 electric SUV have leaked, and it'll also be Kia's smallest so far. It'll be running on the same eGMP platform as the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6, but it'll have more battery capacity than the EV6. That'll give it up to 372 miles of range. This car should start around $40,000 with the higher trim starting around $42,600. China's Ministry of Industry and information technology shared these images and these appear to be its production form. The EV5 will be produced in China first, but it looks like it'll be exported to international markets. That'll mean more competition for the Model Y in the already competitive Chinese market, as well as in other markets. It has a longer range and lower starting price than the Y if all those specs come true, so it should do really great. Buying a new Tesla these days can sometimes feel like playing a slot machine. Prices are always changing, and judging from what Elon said about price cuts last month, until this interest rate drama is over, we might be stuck in a state of hesitancy for some time. As always, people are questioning the future, and Wall Street is even hesitant as we approach the latest CPI. If you're in the camp waiting for the perfect price on a perfect model, your patience could pay off regardless with the right investments. Some great investments include those of exclusive, tangible assets that preferably have historically low correlation to traditional equity. Equities. A great investment there can be fine art, which recently surpassed its pre-2020 highs. Now, I haven't started my art investing journey yet, but some of you have already begun investing there with today's sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks allows almost anyone to invest in blue-chip contemporary art without needing to spend millions. Over 790,000 people have signed up so far, and with the current state of the market, there may be a wait list. Since so many of you have joined thus far, though, my subscribers can still skip the line by clicking the link in the description below. It's great to see smaller cars coming, especially in the American market, which has been saturated by large EVs lately. But that brings us to Subaru's new three-row SUV, which will be made by Toyota in the US. Toyota announced their own three-row SUV in May, called the BZ5X for now, that they expect to enter production in 2025. The vehicles made in this partnership, so far the Toyota BZ4X and Subaru Solterra, are based on the eTNGA platform. Subaru's new SUV should get its batteries from Toyota's new plant in North Carolina, so it should qualify for U.S. tax incentives. This is part of Subaru's plan to have an all-electric lineup by the, quote, early 2030s. Mini's new Cooper E was spotted testing, and it's had an exterior redesign. It looks like it has a large air intake up front, a different bumper, and new wheels, among other things. On the inside, it's going to be shipped with their iconic circular display, but this time it's a 9.44 inch diameter OLED screen, running on their new Android-based operating system 9. With the Mini connected store, owners can download apps like air console games, video streaming apps, and Spotify. This one will come in two trims, a 40.7 kilowatt hour battery, that has 186 miles of WLTP range and the SE trim with a 54.2 kilowatt hour battery. These have all been our more affordable EVs, but a lot of new high-end EVs have been announced that have a lot of exciting features. Porsche's first electric SUV, the Porsche Macan, was spotted recently in near production form. This one will be in the same segment as the Performance Tesla Model Y, Polestar 3, Mercedes-Benz, EQC, Genesis GV60, and others when it arrives in 2024. It'll be based on their PPE platform, same as the Audi Q6 e-tron. That'll come with a 100 kilowatt hour battery that can charge from 5 to 80% in 
under 25 minutes. Rivaling the Macan is Jaguar Land Rover's new electric SUV, the Range Rover Velar EV. This is their third EV coming out of their newly updated facility outside of Liverpool, after the Range Rover Discovery Sport and Evoque SUVs. It'll likely be built on the EMA architecture after 2024, and aims to provide true Range Rover value, including off-road ability, usability, and refinement. For battery efficiency, they say it'll get 4 to 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour, which is comparable to the Model Y. Speaking of Audi, they are reviving their RS6 sports car as an EV, and it should be even more powerful. The RS6 was discontinued in 2010 when the RS7 Sportback came out. The RS6 e-tron will be launched in the UK in 2025, following the A6 e-tron sedan and Avant models due next year. This will also be on their PPE platform and will have up to 603 horsepower. They're planning to launch 10 fully electric models by 2025, and they're already teasing their Q6 e-tron prototype that should enter production next year. Cadillac unveiled their all-electric Escalade IQ earlier this month. It's shipping with a gigantic 200 kilowatt hour battery that'll give it up to 450 miles of range and up to 750 horsepower. This massive vehicle will have a zero to 60 under five seconds and should be able to regain up to 100 miles of range in 10 minutes at a fast charger. It can tow up to 8,000 pounds and comes equipped with VTH, Super Cruise, and four wheel steering. So far, it's only shipping with one trim starting at $130,000 and it should be available late next year. Another new EV from Cadillac leaked recently in China, the Optic EV. It's a mid-size crossover SUV, smaller than the Lyric, but with similar features. The Lyric now starts around $52,433 US dollars over in China, so the Optic should start less than this. It'll have to compete with the Tesla Model Y, which starts around $36,200 US dollars there. They haven't released the specs on this car yet, but it should enter production as early as this year. Fisker has announced the specs of their recently unveiled Alaska pickup, which debuted on August 3rd. It's going to have two battery options, 75 kilowatt hours and 113 kilowatt hours that should get 230 and 340 miles of range respectively. It should also come with single and dual motor options with a zero to 60 between 3.9 and 7.2 seconds. What makes it stand out is its expandable bed design that expands from 4.5 to 9.2 feet, as well as a ton of unique features. That includes a really big cup holder, a hat holder, cockpit storage, and an insulated truck. This truck will be produced in the US and is slated for deliveries by 2025. It'll start at $45,400 and sounds like it should qualify for US tax incentives. Fisker also says that they're delivering the Pair in 2025, which is a six-seater SUV starting at a highly competitive $29,900. On the opposite side of the spectrum, they're offering the Fisker Ronin. They describe it as built for a category of one. It's the world's first all-electric four-door convertible GT sports car, and it starts at $385,000. Reportedly, this one will only be available in a limited run of 999 units. As for specs, it'll have a three-motor all-wheel drive system with more than 745 kilowatts of power, or 1,013 horsepower and a zero to 60 in around two seconds. So it competes with the Plaid Model S in terms of power, but definitely not price. They're also aiming for a top speed of 170 miles per hour and a 600-mile range. That range range does beat the plaid. The Ronin is more so competing with the Lucid Air Sapphire, which starts at $249,000 and gets a zero to 60 in 1.89 seconds with 1,234 horsepower. That beats the Plaid by a tenth of a second. It's also shipping with a top speed of 205 miles per hour, made possible with built-in carbon ceramic brakes. It'll also have a more efficient 427 mile EPA range. Lucid has teased this trim rolling off the assembly lines in Arizona and said it would be available soon. Also getting into the electric sports car game is Honda, who teased one coming out later this year. It'll reportedly be based on their EN electric platform, which is what they showed off with their ENY1 SUV, which we'll get to in just a minute. They've said they plan to launch 30 EV models by 2030, and at least two of those will be electric sports cars. They haven't revealed specs yet, but we can expect a steep price tag. Quote, while we cannot compete with Chinese manufacturers on price, we have 75 years of engineering experience. Lamborghini debuted their Lanzador concept at Monterey Car Week that should arrive in 2028. It's a little bulkier than we're used to with this brand, looking like a cross between the Huracan Storado and Urus SUV. 
It's quad motor and has 1000 watts of electrical power, which translates to about 1,341 horsepower. This high ground clearance GT aims to combine the performance of a Lamborghini super sports car with the versatility of a daily driver. This is part of their mission to electrify their entire lineup by the end of 2024, which will include the Huracan PHEV and Urus PHEV. Of course, this fully electric one won't actually be coming for another four years after that goal. On the slightly more affordable side is the BMW i5 sedan, starting at $66,800. With a 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds and a range of up to 295 miles, the eDrive 40 trim is more like your average commuter. For a little more power and $17,300 more, the M60 trim gets a 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds and a top speed increase. The i5 is competing with the Model S with slightly less horsepower and lower range, but starting more than $10,000 less. It'll also come with a lot of premium features BMW is known for, and some new ones including in-car gaming on a curved display. VW's ID.8 will be even more affordable, starting around $45,000. It's a three-row mid-size SUV with the same battery pack as their smaller vehicles, so we expect it to have a range under 365 miles. They haven't released specs yet, but it seems like it'll be competing with the Model X size-wise with a much more modest 0 to 60. Similarly, GM has announced the Ultium Buick Electra E5, which should have around 340 horsepower and 300 miles of range, starting at about $50,000. Honda's first EV on their own dedicated platform will be the ENY1 electric SUV, and that one should get around 256 miles of WLTP range, which will be notably lower on the EPA scale, and it will come in Europe first. Honda is also partnering with Sony to make the Afila, a more futuristic sedan that should start around $45,000. I'm particularly excited for this one since it should have a lot of very cool tech from Sony, but we'll have to see. It's definitely Sony's first electric car effort. Chrysler, moving towards an all-electric lineup by 2028, is working on their Airflow EV concept that will replace the Chrysler 300. They're aiming for a 400-mile range and level 3 autonomous driving capabilities, but we'll have to see about that one. Ford is also working on a large three-row SUV that could carry the Explorer nameplate, but that one has been delayed for now and is intended for the European market. It's also built on VW's own platform, so long-term they may have to go a completely different direction in the US if they want to introduce an EV like this. Last up is the long-awaited Apple car, which was first rumored to be fully autonomous. They've since abandoned that goal in recent rumors, and any other details on this car are still just rumor. If it ever does officially get announced, it'll likely be built on an existing automaker's platform and compete directly with Tesla. Overall, it's great to see legacy automakers gradually replacing their ICE lineups with more efficient EV alternatives, and this is a trend that isn't going anywhere. Not all of the EVs we discussed are going to be offered in the US, and some may not even end up being offered at all, but eventually every automaker is going to have to have a compelling EV option, and that is a future to definitely be excited for. I hope this video was helpful for you, and in the meantime, if you want to see my full review of the Ford Mustang Mach-E, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.